Hi, Bob Shearer here, and let's take a look at the spaghetti on the desk, and let's go over our rules for occupant sensing systems. Rule one, don't put the lights out on people. If somebody's in the room and the sensor loses sight of them, and this is par for the course with occupancy sensing devices, they should be able to rear up and wave at the sensor. I mean, you're going to get that. Uh, it's not a good thing, but it's likely to happen. However, if somebody rears up and waves at the sensor and nothing happens and they have to go wandering around waving, they're going to want that system out of there or they're going to call you back and say, we want this fixed. So, one of the ways you can avoid that happening is using a system where you have one sensor that covers all the paths of egress in and out of the area of interest and a second one that just covers everything all right now that's going to be prone to false triggering which is our second no-no false triggering you don't want that to happen now to accomplish our end we can use an infrared sensor indoor or outdoor to cover the paths that people will be taking into an area. However, to keep the lights on in the area, we would want something that's got more reach and that can see all over, such as an ultrasonic indoor or perhaps a microwave sensor outdoors. The problem is that the ultrasonic and the microwave are going to have a tendency to false trigger. And if they do it enough, within their timeout period, then we're going to have a problem where the lights just stay on. So I'm going to use a latching relay. And there's nothing magic about this relay. The relay is actually a standard relay. And we'll take a look at this in a second. Now I realize this just looks like a big bundle of spaghetti. But I'm going to illustrate what we're doing. And for those of you who've done motor control, you'll know that this is how you wire the auxiliary contacts on a motor controller. But we're just going to do this. Here we have our microwave sensor. At least these wires represent the contacts on the microwave sensor. Triggering the microwave sensor by itself does nothing. Here we have two wires that represent our infrared sensor which is targeting the door or any paths of egress and this can be multiple infrared sensors all wired in parallel. When they see somebody they turn the system on, they turn the lights on, okay? And after timeout they turn it off. However, if the microwave false triggers, okay, such as that, nothing's going to happen. So let's go ahead and close these and say the microwave sensor is seeing something and now the infrared sensor sees somebody. We get our lights. Now the infrared sensor loses sight of them but our major coverage device which is the microwave is still seeing them and is still latched or is still keeping the relay latched. When I disconnect after timeout, say the microwave goes off, off go the lights. Similar, someone comes in, infrared sees them, then the microwave sees them, then the infrared loses sight of them, then finally after timeout, the microwave no longer sees them and the lights go off. So this is just a standard latching relay and the magic comes in the way we've wired it. So let's take a look at that. Now some of you are probably wondering why I just don't get a more sophisticated control. When you see the area that we're going to be controlling for this particular project, you'll see why. But we're going to assume that a more advanced lighting control will have the kind of functionality that we're looking for in our system. This one has the ability to use the infrared to turn the lighting on and the ultrasonic to hold it on and this is beautiful for indoor not for the location we're going to be uh, working in though and uh, 
that's great. And we're also going to assume that anything that you can do with a buck and a half single pole relay that we're using for our latching relay, you'll be able to do with a $50,000 uh, lighting control system. So what's important here is to grasp the concept. Properly positioned and masked, this IR will not false trigger. It will just cover the uh, egress in and out of the area under control and any other common area that you can put on its field of view. These, the ultrasonic, that's going to be prone to false triggering and that's why this device has the ability to use the IR to turn on the lighting and the ultrasonic to hold on the lighting. The ultrasonic alone, when it's set for that function, will not turn the lights on, hence no false triggering from movements outside the area of interest. Now this is a BZ150 power pack and it's got some logic to it. It has quite a few control lines on it. Uh, unfortunately, and maybe I missed something, I couldn't figure out how to make this work as a simple latching relay for the sort of application that we need today. And uh, I might be wrong. If I'm wrong, somebody leave a comment. You'd think with all the wires on a BZ150, I'd be able to pull this trick without having this uh, relay, but we're just going to use a regular BZ50, and it has got a control line that we are going to want to hot up to get the thing to switch the load on. That being said, we also have our relay, which is going to have a common and two contacts. One of them is going to be normally closed, and we have a relay coil that is going to energize that arm. Now, of course, the whole point of this thing, when this arm snaps down, this armature snaps down, is to apply plus 24 volts to the BZ50's control input and switch on the load. Okay, so that's what we're after, the end result. Oops, messed up my drawing, so let's make a better one here. One side of this relay coil is tied to 24 volt common, okay? because we're using the 24 volts off the power pack to run all of this. If you're going to pull this precise trick, make sure that your relay isn't going to suck up, uh, the relay coil isn't going to suck up too much power or else it's not going to work. BZ50's uh, output current rating is uh, right on its nameplate. So if we take our infrared sensor control output or contacts, however you want to look at it, we can use that to fire the coil. It's going to be delivering the plus 24 volts right to the relay coil. And what have we done here? We've done nothing. We've, we've earned nothing. We've bought nothing with this. When this triggers, we could have just taken this line and hooked it to the control on line. It's going to switch the BZ50 on and connect the load but we're going to do something different. Suppose when the infrared sensor drives the armature of the relay down to this contact, the normally open contact, we were to tie this back to the relay coil. Now it would latch on and stay latched. We don't want that, but we do want it to latch if the microwave sensor sees anything. So this represents the micro, that's a little Greek micron, microwave sensor coils, uh, uh, contacts right here. So now we tie this relay normally open contact through the microwave sensor contacts back to the coil. So if the microwave sensor is activated, it's going to hold this relay closed. Okay, infrared turns it on, snaps down. Now we have a hot through the microwave sensor, holds it on until this times out. 
let's say the infrared sensor isn't seeing anything because it's the middle of the night but a particularly large raccoon starts running around on the walls or ceiling of our structure and the microwave sensor trips well it doesn't have any 24 volts to supply because the infrared has not tripped and these contacts are not closed motor control people will recognize this as a standard three wire control circuit very simple and presumably your big fancy expensive lighting control system will give you this functionality let's hope so because if you put the lights out on people and they rear up and wave at the sensor and it doesn't come back on and they have to wander around in the room something's going to need to be done about that so you use something that may false trigger a bunch but still will cover the entire area thoroughly so all this nasty spaghetti looking stuff all over the desk here is just what was on the diagram but additionally we have the power for the power pack and the load and basically that's it uh, everything over here is just what was shown on the diagram now I've substituted the wires we were using to simulate the infrared sensor with the actual infrared sensor so there you go it can see you and it turns on and I'm going to cover it back up and wait for time out and then it's going to turn back off and there it went so this time we're going to take the wires marked microwave and as there's a dry contact in the microwave this is going to be the same thing as having the microwave sensor activate now we get our lighting on we twist these together and we let the thing go past its timeout, which is about 30 seconds now and we'll see that the light should stay on now the infrared sensor timed out a long time ago I went and got a cup of coffee and all that we can see that we still have the load on and it's being held by the microwave sensor and its associated timeout so in reality the infrared sensor would catch people walking back out of the room but let's just say somebody's been working in the back of the room the infrared sensor lost track of them a long time ago the microwave is occasionally catching them within its timeout period and so now the microwave finally times out uh, this wouldn't probably happen with an occupant in the room but you can see that this, the contacts on the microwave sensor are going to keep the lighting on in the place period okay now when somebody actually leaves the room the infrared sensor is going to see him again uh, now you're at the mercy of whatever these timeouts are but they have definitely left the area there's nobody in there anymore the lights will stay out until both the microwave sensor times out and the infrared times out so this is a very safe system for an unsafe area and we'll look at where this is going in next